بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم صلى الله عليك يا سيدي ومولاي يا رسول الله صلى الله عليك يا سيدي ومولاي يا أبا عبد الله يا رحمة الله الواسعة ويا باب نجاة الأمة ما خاب من تمسك بكم وأمن من لجأ إليكم يا ليتنا كنا معكم سيدي فنفوز فوزا عظيما لعن الله الظالمين لكم من الأولين والآخرين Tonight is regarded the night of Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayh and he is such a great shining figure in Islamic history that really one feels difficult to cover all aspects of his life and his personality. Amir al-Mu'minin salawatullahi wa salamu alayh in you from the knowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him and through what has the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam has told him that his son Imam Hussein is going to stand against the tyranny of Umayyad rulers and he is going to be killed in Karbala. Actually he knew the place and in some of his battles in Nahrawan when he was passing in Karbala he stopped there and he took part of the land and smelled it and cried and he said in this land my son Hussein will be assassinated with his family members and companions and supporters. So Imam Salamullah Alayh was planning that if Imam Hussein goes to Karbala, at least he may have some brothers, brave brothers, to be with him. And that is why he came and asked to his brother Aqil. Aqil was elder brother of Amir al-Mu'minin alayhi salam. And as it said, he was aliman bi ansab al-Arab. He knew the lineage of Arab tribes. Which tribe is a brave, which tribe is not, which tribe is with good morality, which one is coward, which one is bad, which one is um, respected, not respected, and so on. So he knew all the, the qualities and specifications of the Arab tribes. And he told his brother, Aqil, that choose for me a woman that I can marry and she may give birth to a brave son and that son will be supporter of my son Hussein in Karbala. Aqil said, well, Fatima, daughter of Hizam, or some said Hiram, the name of her father, Al-Kilabiyya, Bani Kilab were well-known tribe of the era before Islam and among them all their family, their father, grandfather, grand-grandfather, uncles, all were known to be very brave and not only brave in well physical power but actually they were very honorable people. They were thinking of the poor people, helping the poor and needy people, were not attacking others unjustly but defend themselves Whenever there is war, they can defend themselves. One of the uh, grandfathers were called Mula'abul Asinna because he used to play with the spears uh, very bravely and move the spear very quickly in different directions. So they used to call him Mula'abul Asinna. And they had a great role in Arab history before Islam. So yeah. Aqil told him that this family is good family. First of all, they are honorable. Secondly, all of them are 
brave. So Imam Ali السلام, asked him to go and ask for hand of the Mr. Hizam, his daughter Fatima. While here we see many points, you know, really to be thought of. First of all, Amir al Mu'minin Salamullah Alayh realized that to choose a woman, you have to choose a woman from good and known family because lineage has its effect. What we call today hereditary factors are effective in the personality of the woman, even her physiology, psychology, anatomy, uh, morality, all aspects is in a, affected by her family. So when she is from honorable tribe, she will be with honor, with respect, with values, with morality. Secondly, there is a way to marry than Amir al-Mu'minin as his elder brother. Of course, Amir al-Mu'minin, salamullah alayhi, he has all the knowledge about Arabs and other than Arabs because he is the door for the city of knowledge of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. But he wanted to clarify the reason for his marriage. Not that he didn't know whom to marry and Aqil guided him. No, he wanted to show that to Aqil and to be registered in the history. If he would have married, then would have been ordinary case. He might have married many wives, then it is okay. But now he asked for that reason, this is a reason and to set an example for others to follow. Thirdly, that he asked his elder brother for the engagement to go and have the engagement to be done. Well, Aqil, brother of Amir al muminin and son of Abu Talib, Radwanullah ta'ala alayhi, from Quraysh, naturally was a known personality. And when he came to the tribe of Bani Amr, naturally they welcomed him a lot. And as the usual trend was there, they made him as guest for three days before asking him for what he has come. That was the usual trend. They do not ask the person right away, you are coming for what? They first welcome him, he sit, he feel homely. And after three days, then they ask him, okay, if we can be of any service to you. So after three days, they told him and he said, well, I came asking hand of your daughter for my brother Ali ibn Abi Talib, salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Well, the father naturally did not uh, hesitate and he said, but still I have to get permission of my uh, daughter. So he came to the tent and he saw that his daughter is mentioning a dream to her mother that yesterday I saw some stars in my Bad and a moon also came down and was with me. So I didn't know what is this. So that dream she was telling her mother. Then the father said right away that you are, this Aqil has come and you are going to marry Amir al Mu'minin, Salamullah alayhi, and you will get four sons. They will be brave sons, and one of them will be called as. Qamar al-Ashira, the moon of the tribe. So the marriage ceremony was done and Umm al-Banin was not in a, elder, in, in a higher age than Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein because um, probably her marriage was at the year 22. And um, in that year, her age was something around also 22 years, 23 years. And naturally the age of Imam Hassan was born in the third year of Hijrah, so his age was 19 and Imam Hussein 18, say the Zainab, uh, about, I mean, 16, 17. So in that age, you know, they were naturally 
young. But still, when Umm al-Banin came, she realized that this is the place of their mother, and probably in their heart, though they were imams, though they were noble, though they were great, but still it is a psychological matter when they see some women come to stay in a state of their mother and to have the same place, they might feel something at home. So when she entered home, she got permission from Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein and Sayyidah Zainab Salamullah Alayhim that do you agree that I will be as a servant to you in this house? They welcomed her and she was always at their service because she realized their greatness. They were grandsons of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Beside that, they have a great stature as the well-known hadith, al Hassan wal Hussein, Sayyidah Shabab Ahl al-Jannah. The Hassan and Hussein are masters of the youth of paradise. So she must have heard all these traditions of the Holy Prophet praising his grandsons. When Amir al muminin Salamullah alayha used to call her Fatima, her name Fatima, then she realized that Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein, they re remember their mother and the tragedy of Fatima to Zahra Salamullah alayha. So she told Amir al muminin don't call me by my name, because every time Hassan and Hussein will remember their mother and might feel sorrow for the tragedy happened to Fatima to Zahra Salamullah alayha, though that happened about 10, 12 year, years before that, but still that memory is alive in their heart because the tragedy of Fatima to Zahra was great as you know. So Amir al muminin Salamullah alayh called her Umm al banin Umm al banin literally means mother of the boys, you know, the children who are boys. But that name is usually given to a great lady who had who had a good position and high position in her society. The one who ran the affairs and administration of the her tribe or the community or the people. So how if a mother had, let us say, ten children, all the her children are with her, so she had honor that she has brave sons around her. So that title is given to any lady, well, whether she had sons or not, but any great lady in her tribe is called Ummul Banin. So Amir al muminin Salamullah Alayh, right away he gave her that title and said, you are Ummul Banin, and he used to call her Ummul Banin. Ummul Banin Salamullah Alayh used to tell her sons, the first son, who was born where Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas salamullahi alayhi in the year 26 is mentioned in the history. So he, his age in uh, Karbala was around 37 years. His birth was on 4th Sha'ban in the year 26 after Hijra. Well, Abu al-Fadl salamullahi alayhi when he was born, Amir al-Mu'minin alayhi salam, when he got him, he came and he looked to his hands and kissed his hands and cried. Umm al banin was worried. Amir al muminin should be happy. He has a newborn baby. And why he is looking to the hands? Any problem in the hands? She asked him, why you are looking to the hand? What a problem is there? Why you are crying? He said, no, nothing wrong with his hand. But I remember that these hands will be cut for the sake of Allah to protect my son Hussein in Karbala. She said if the hands are being devoted for sake of Imam Hussein, then I will not mind, you know. Well, after that, when Abu al-Fadl grew up, he used to realize the greatness of his elder brothers, Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein, and his great sister, Sayyida Zainab, salamullahi alayha. And he was always looked to them as a master to him, not as a brother to brother, because he, he knows they are imams and they are masters of the 
people of the world, all the world. When you say Imam, he is leader appointed by Almighty God for all the world. It is mentioned that one day Amir al-Mu'mini was delivering a sermon and Imam Hassan, Imam Hussein was sitting in the mosque and he feel thirsty, he asked for water. So his brother Abu al-Fadl, he was still a young boy and he ran to the house and asked his mother that I need water. My master, my brother Hussein is thirsty and he was carrying the pot in hand and because the pot was full of water and naturally he was a child the water was falling down amir al muminin from the pulpit when he noticed that he started weeping and remembered that abu al is the one who give who bring water for the children in karbala he remembered that scene uh, when he saw him Abu al-Fadl was very brave, salamullahi alayhi, from his childhood. Beside that, he was very beautiful, uh, very tall. Uh, well, some said when he uh, ride the horse, actually his legs will be near the earth. So tall when he ride them. And in Safin, at the year 37, well, 37 and Abu al-Fadl, if his birth was 26, then his age was 11 years. Now some said maybe 24, his birth is there. Now again, his age 13 years. And Amir al-Mu'minin prevented Bani Hashim from fighting because they were very brave and they will fight and Muawiyah will try to send bigger troop and will kill them. And then Bani Hashim tribe will finish. So he prevented Imam Hassan, Imam Hussein, Abu al-Fadl abbas and others to fight. He said, you, you do not fight. You be leader of the army. I mean, Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein were on the right wing of the army, but they themselves were not physically fighting in Sufin. And then they saw suddenly a boy who is covering his face. They do not know who is he. He came out and asking for a fight. Muawiyah told a brave man that you go and fight with him. He said, well, he is a boy, he's a child, you know, I will not go. I will send my children. So he had seven children. He sent them one by one and Abu al-Fadl killed them all. So the father was very angry and he came. And when he came to fight, Abu al-Fadl told him, that let me get permission from my master because the trend was to get permission. Then he came to Amir al Mumin. Amir al Mumin told him, Didn't I tell you do not fight? He said, Yes, I did not want to fight, but they called me to fight, and it shows that I am coward if I will not respond to them. So it looks the first question was from the side of army of Muawiyah. He said, okay, but then give me your address and take my address. We changed the address and Amir al-Mumin was covering his face. And he came to that man. Well, he was known brave man from Sham. That man was just mocking that, oh, did you get permission from your master? Amir al-Mumin did not say yes, because it is not a true. He is the Amir al-Mumin, not Abbas. To say, yes, I got permission is not true. So he recited an ayah, It is allowed for those who were uh, fought to fight because uh, oppression is done to them. And then he, with one stick, he cut his body into two parts completely. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Muawiyah and Amr ibn al-As were looking that before he was a child and now this child come out as such a brave man when he cut, he cut into two pieces, you know, the fighter. How he can cut all the um, steel and iron in the body uh, and they said, well, this is not 
for ordinary person, nobody can do that except Amir al-Mu'mineen. But before he was a child, no, was Amir al-Mu'mineen. What is the case? So Amr ibn al-As told Muawiyah that if you want to know the truth, ask the army to attack, all the army. If he is ordinary brave man, then he will go back because he needs his army to support his back. He cannot fight one person in front of thousands. And if he is Amir al muminin he will stop. He is Karrar, Ghair Farrar. He attack and will never run away, even if thousands are in front of him. So Ma'awi ordered the army to attack. Amir al muminin stood in front of them all and start killing them one by one till his army joined him and then they realized that he was Amir al muminin alayhi salam. So Abu al-Fadl, from that age, he was known to be very brave, Ridwanullah Ta'ala Alayh. And when he came to yeah, Imam Hussein asked his uh, brothers and relatives to come with him, Abu al Fadl joined him. Well, also Sayyida Zainab, Salamullah Alayha. You know, Sayyida Zainab, Salamullah Alayha, had a husband, Abdullah ibn Ja'far, her cousin, Abdullah, son of Ja'far al Tayyar. But it looks that from time of marriage, uh, a condition was put that uh, there should be no separation between Zainab and her brother Imam Hussein. If Imam Hussein leaves somewhere to Karbala, Abdullah ibn Ja'far should allow her. Of course, Abdullah ibn Ja'far, even without that condition, he was a very noble man. And he sent two children. One of the children was son of Sayyida Zainab, another son was son of another wife. Uh, he realized the greatness of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, and, uh, but still uh, probably for that peculiarity it was mentioned that this condition to be there to show the uh, great relation between Sayyida Zainab and Imam Hussein alayhi salam. And it is said that Amir al-Mu'mineen salamullahi alayhi when he was martyred in Kufa uh, at time of before, just, just before dying, he called his son Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas and called his daughter Zainab and put hand of Zainab in hand of Abu al-Fadl and said, this is my trust to you, took care of her. So that is an extra stress for Abu al-Fadl that he is responsible to protect his Sister Sayyida Zainab Salamullahi Alayha. Well, throughout the way, Abu al Fadl was carrying the main uh, banner of Imam Hussein Alayhi Salam, the main flag, uh, which is known for any army to move. There is one big standard uh, that was in hand of Abu al Fadl Salamullahi Alayhi throughout the way. Well, till they reached Karbala. And we know on the um, 9th of Muharram at night, Laylat Ashura, Abu al-Fadl was with Bani Hashim and he was leading uh, Bani Hashim where Abu uh, Ali al-Akbar Salamullah alayhi was there and Al-Qasim was there and sons of Muslim Ibn Aqil and other um, Hashimite members of the family. They were 17 totally. And then he asked them, that if tomorrow the war will start, uh, who will start? Should we start the war or our supporters? They said all, no, we have to start because Imam Hussein is related to us and we are uh, responsible of the cause of Islam, so we will martyr ourselves first. Well, in the day of Ashura, Shemir ibn Dijoshan came and he said, Aynabanu Ukhtina, where are our nephews? Because Umm al had some relation with the Bani Umayyah from the mother's side, you know. So he wanted to uh, ask Abu al-Fadl, maybe he will leave Imam Hussein and he will join them. And he said to him that, we have got uh, peace and security for you from 
Ubaidillah ibn Ziyad that if you join us, they will not kill you. Abu al face did not want even to go and talk to Shemir because it is shameful. Then Shemir, when he called three times, Imam Hussein told Abu al go and talk to him when kana fasiqa, even if he is fasiq, but go and see what he wants. When Shemir told Abu al that because you are related to our ruler, so we got peace for you, he said, Allah wa la'ana amanak. May Allah curse you and curse the peace you are giving to me. You give me peace and Wabn Rasulillah la amanala. The son of the Holy Prophet, you are not giving him peace and you give peace to me. No, we do not want that. So Abu al-Fad Salamullah Alayh remained and he was beside Imam Hussein Salamullah Alayh. It is said that three days before Ashura, the water was banned for the family of Imam Hussein. And it is mentioned that every day Abu al-Fadl used to attack, though there is 30,000 army, at least 4,000 people were around the water to prevent water from reaching Imam Hussein. And Abu al-Fadl used to go every day and bring some water for the children till the last day of Ashura when the water completely were banned and nobody could go there. So Abu al-Fadl was beside Imam Hussein and Imam Hussein Salamullah Alayh uh, used to get his help to save some of the uh, fighters, the Ashab. Four brothers, you know, they were fighting and then they were suddenly at the middle of the army of Omar ibn Sa'd and the army surrounded them from all the sides. So they called help of Imam Hussein. Imam Hussein sent Abu al-Fadl alone and he attacked all that army till he reached those four companions and they were injured and he wanted to bring them back to the tent. But while coming back, the people came near to them and they were injured and ultimately they were martyred, Radhwanullah Ta'ala alayhim. So he's alone to go in an army, the army will run away in front of him, Salamullah alayhi. Well, it is said even his, uh, the stick of his standard with the standard all was shown to Yazid. He saw this, the, the flag everywhere was attacked and even the standard from everywhere were hit except from the side where the hand is there. So Yazid was astonished that so many thousands of people, they could not take the standard from Abu al that the place where he catch it, nobody could touch it, you know. And from the angry, he stood three times and sit, stood and said that, how brave is this uh, man that nobody with 30,000 army and so many brave people they could not reach the place of the standard. They were afraid maybe by arrow from far, they attack his standard. So that was the bravery of Abu al but the greatness was his Iman and his faith. Imam al-Sadiq, salamullahi alayhi, he said, كَانَ عَمِّي أَبُوا الْفَضْلِ نَافِذَ الْبَصِيرَ صُلْبَ الْإِيمَانِ This is very important. نَافِذَ الْبَصِيرَ, his awareness about his faith about his religious duty is very clear. Not like other people, he come, okay, my brother is at risk, I will help my brother, whether he's on the right side or wrong side. Well, as long as he is my brother, I have to support him. No, it is not that. And not that my tribe are fighting, okay, I will support my tribe, rightly or wrongly. No, it is not like that. He knows that this is the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Imam Hussein is taking a stand in such critical situation that Islam is in great danger and if that stand would not have been there, then Islam would have been ruined completely by Bani Umayyah. So the cause is cause of saving Islam, all Islam. Whatever Islam we have today, even Sunni Islam which is there or Shia Islam, all 
was saved by Abu al-Fadl. Otherwise, nothing of Islam would have remained as nothing of the previous religions remained, you know. It was completely changed and distorted. So Abu al-Fadl, salamu alayhi, realized the greatness of this stand. And that is why uh, you say, sulb al -iman, very strong in his faith. Salamu alayhi, alayhi. And we see in his ziyarat very great praise for Abu al-Fadl. When start Imam al-Sadiq in his ziyarat, Salamullahi wa salamu malaikati al-Muqarrabin wa anbiya al-Mursaleen wa abadi al-Salihin. You see they say the peace of Almighty God, or peace of the angels, peace of the prophets be upon you. Uh, so he praised Abu al-Fadl greatly. Uh, in that ziyarat, which has very great meanings, you know. So it's not actually the matter only of a bravery, but actually the faith is there. Otherwise, many braves were there, but somebody to have a great iman and to be brave, that was unique for Abu al-Fadl, salamullahi alayhi. Well, when all the Supporters of Imam Hussein were martyred and the turn came for Bani Hashim. Abu al-Fadl wanted to start, but then Ali al-Akbar started the war. And then after him was Al-Qasim and then sons of Musa ibn Aqil. When all were finished, Imam Hussein remained with Abu al-Fadl. Abu al-Fadl came and told him, Oh my brother, allow me now to attack the enemies. Imam Hussein said, Brother, if you go, then no one will remain with me. You are sup my supporters. The family, when they look to you, they feel satisfied that at least you are alive. He said, well, I cannot wait for seeing these enemies of Allah, what they have done. And they killed all the companions and all the family members. He said, okay, and if that is the case, then get some water for the children because the children were crying al-atash al-atash. More than 70 children were there in the caravan of Imam Hussein alayhi salam and naturally they could not tolerate thirsty. So Abu al-Fadl uh, took the um, skin for water and came toward the Furat. 4,000 people were there. They tried their best to prevent him but he attacked them so bravely that they could not resist and they turned away. When he came to the river of Farat and filled the water skin, he took water by hand to drink. And then he remembered that his brother, Imam Hussein, is thirsty. How come he drink water while his brother is thirsty? So he threw the water from his hand and uh, came out hurriedly uh, riding the horse to reach the tents and give water to the children. Omar ibn Sa'd ordered the army to prevent him and then all the army surrounded him. Well, it is said about Fadl Kid, about 120 people of them, but then they could not come and face him face to face. One came from behind the tree and then cut his right hand. So he took the sword in his left hand and continued fighting. Another enemy came from the left side from behind a tree and he cut his left hand. So now Abu al-Fadl has no hands to fight. He took the sword with his teeth and sometimes he was throwing the army by feet and they were running away afraid from him. Then Harmala had an arrow and that arrow came to his eye and to his body was full of arrows and bleeding. And then one came with the steel and he said, Ya Abu al-Fadl, you used to say, who will fight with me now? I am coming to fight with you. He said, you come when I have no hands. That tyrant man, cruel man said, if you have no hands, I have hands. Then he hit Abu al-Fadl on the, his head. Abu al-Fadl, salamullah alayhi, fall down on the ground. Well, Sheikh Kazim Sabti was one of the ulama. And one of the ulama came 
told him that I saw yesterday Abu al in my dream telling me, tell Sheikh Kadam Sibti to recite my ta'ziyah. He said, well, Sheikh Kadam always recite your ta'ziyah. He said, no, tell him this, what I tell you. The, if the brave man on the horse fell on the ground, he will catch the ground with what? He said, naturally, with his hands. But Abu al said, I did not have hands and only the arrows in my eye and in my body. So I faced the, the ground with arrows and arrows entered to my body more and more. That is why he fell on the ground and he called Aba Abdullah, Akhi Adrik Akhak. Imam Hussein came hurriedly and he saw his brother full of blood. He put head of the brother on his leg just before moments of dying. Abu al refused. He said, no, let my head be on the ground. He said, why? He said, because you, brother, after one hour, you will fall down on the ground and nobody will take your head. You will be on the ground, so will me, let me be similar to you. And then he said, Ya Aba Abdullah, let me hear. Do not take me to the tent. First of all, because death is coming. Secondly, I promised Sukaina to bring water and I feel ashamed from her to go without water. Inna lillah wa inna alayhi raji'oon. وَسَيَعْلَمُ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا أَيَّ مِنْ قَلَبٍ يَنْقَلِبُونَ وَالْعَاقِبَةُ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ اللهم أنا نسلك وندعوك بجلال وجهك الكريم وبمحمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين وبالحسين الوجيه وجده وأبيه وأمي وأخيه والتسعة المعصومين من بنيه اللهم بحق باب الحوائج أبي الفضل العباس عجل فرج وليك صاحب العصر والزمان واجعلنا من أنصاره وأعوانه ومن المجاهدين بين يديه اللهم اقض بهم حوائجنا واشف بهم مرضانا وارحم بهم موتانا واغفر بهم ذنوبنا ووسع بهم أرزاقنا وانصرنا بهم على أعدائنا اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين في كل مكان اللهم فرج عن المؤمنين المسجونين في سجون الظالمين اللهم اجغل الظالمين بالظالمين واجعلنا من بينهم سالمين اللهم كما رزقتنا في الدنيا أن نجلس في مجالسهم ونحي شعائرهم فارزقنا يوم القيامة شفاعتهم وعلى الصراط مرافقتهم وفي الجنة معهم على سرر المتقابلين مع الشهداء والصالحين وحسن أولئك رفيقا وإلى روح موتانا خصوصا من العلماء والشهداء والصالحين ومن مات على الإيمان رحم الله من يهدي ثواب الفاتحة قبلها صلوات اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد بسم الله